Hi, I'm Sean Smith. This is Sean Smith Photos, where I edit street photography and occasional travel photos with On One Photo Raw. So today uh, we're going to go into the second second video of my ongoing series, Read the Manual. Today we're going to read the manual about the glow filter. And what is it? Why would we want to use it? Uh, things like that. So I've tried this filter a couple of times in the past and didn't really know what it was doing. Uh, so today I decided I'd read the manual and let's get to it. All right, so uh, first off, let's say, let's find out what the manual has to say. Okay, so here's a screenshot from the manual. This is the only bit about the glow filter. It doesn't really give you too many tips about what to do. Uh, it says, this pane adds a soft focus glow to the image, which can be accentuated by using different blending modes. The style section and the more pop-up include a number of different glow types. Adjustable settings for the glow pane include the amount, which controls the strength of the glow. Halo, which sets the radius of the glow effect. Higher numbers create more fuzziness to your image's edge. So that, that kind of sounds to me like a something similar or analogous to uh, a feather. And mode lets you set the blending mode for the glow effect. All right, so we're going to investigate this with these three photos that uh, I quickly did a little bit of processing on it just before this uh, recording this. The next photo was taken last month in New York near the Finger Lakes area. Uh, this is processed already. Uh, and then the third one was taken when I was in Cancun and we went on an excursion. Um, part of the excursion was this sea note. So I chose these three photos because when I was researching the glow effect, I watched the video, this video by uh, Scott Davenport, and I'll include the link in the show notes, where he explores the glow filter. And one of the things he said is that the glow filter is often used in portraits and landscapes. Now, I have almost no portraits, and I do have some landscapes from when I do my occasional travel photography. And so that's what we're going to go take a look at. So, you know, if we look here, the it adds a soft glow focus to your image. Now, in landscape photography, I'm not sure where we would want this soft focus. So I just grabbed three random images. They may or may not be the best choice for it. So what I'm going to do is with this first image here, I'm going to flip over into the edit module and I'll hide the film strip. And here we can see that I added a couple of effects already. Uh, so this is what I got out of the camera and this is what I quickly turned it into with three minutes. Let's add a glow filter and see what it's going to do for us. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice immediately is that the amount is set to zero. So the glow does nothing out of the box. You need to choose a preset or go and adjust it. So I'm going to hit the normal one. And let's turn this on and off. Okay, so I can see right out of the box that the clouds got a lot softer and the trees lost some of the crispiness, some of the detail and focus, which I had enhanced with uh, the dynamic contrast filter. Now, I think that, you know, maybe we would want to do this glow fill, glow and have it only apply to the clouds so that it could 
maybe show some sort of uh, movement in the clouds with wind moving around. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to use super select and I'm going to select the sky. And we're going to apply the oops, sky, apply it, and then we have to change it to paint in. Okay. Now let's close the mask. We'll kind of focus this here on the sky. You can see the amount has moved up a lot and the halo. What was halo again? It's how much fuzziness it creates. So let's move this halo up all the way to the end. And let's move it all the way down. Okay, yeah, so it does soften it a lot more. And then what about if we put the amount up here? Ooh, that's really ugly. That's back to normal. What about, okay, let's try the different presets. We're gonna hover over each of them. So Angel. Orton hears a who? Who names these things? Orton hears a who? Okay, I'm not sure what an Orton effect is, but it really created a lot of drama in the clouds. Okay, I'm going to stick with normal on this one here. And so before and after, I think it does enhance this a little bit. So I'm kind of happy with that. Let's take a look at the next shot. All right, so I'd already processed this before and I had a dynamic contrast filter initially added, but when I opened it up today, I turned it off because I thought it was making things a little bit over-processed. And in this photo here, I'm thinking that the glow would be good to add in the reflection and enhance the softness or the movement of the reflection. So let's try that out. Let's go grab a glow filter and we'll hit normal. And I like what norm, once again, I like the normal one has done to the reflection here, but I don't like what it's done to the trees or the rest of the photo. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to mask out everything else except the water, apply that, and we need to invert it. And let's turn this on and off. Yeah, so I, I think here, when we add the glow filter to the reflection, it makes it a little bit more dreamy or ethereal or surreal. And let's see what the other options do. Angel glow. Okay, so I'm going to go with charge more normal. But let's do on and off. Yeah, I'm going to pull back on the opacity a little bit, maybe about halfway. There we go. Yeah, I like that a lot more. It was making this area over here too dark. And so, yeah, we're, we're seeing how this can soften up different areas of your photos. And let's take a look at the third shot. And I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking that yeah, there's nothing in here that a glow filter would do much to. So, but let's just do a quick check. And well, before I do that, yeah, this shot hasn't even been edited. <laughs> All right, let's uh, very quickly, we'll just AI auto, uh, AI match. Okay, AI match is the one to go with. Uh, we'll pull back on the haze a little bit. I'll pull up on the structure and then let's go into effects and add our glow filter. And normal. Oh, wait a second.
That's kind of interesting. Okay, so once again, this time I'm going to do paint in and I'm going to select water and apply it. Oops, it's paint out, I don't want paint in. Yeah, okay. Uh, and let's um, check out the different options here. So when I cycle over the drop down, I open up the drop down. And then I move the mouse over the first item and I switch to the keyboard and the up and down arrow keys. And I'm cycling through that, kind of like this one, uh, charge more subtle. Now if you watch along the platform at the bottom, you can really see what it's doing with the shadows. Oh, Hollywood glow. Well, I kind of like that one here. Uh, lighter. I'm going to go with lighter. And we'll turn this. Yeah, so I think in this case, the lighter option gives it this feeling of it's reflecting the sun that's coming from the hole in the ceiling and brightening it up in there. In any case, this is read the manual glow filter. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. You can find me on Instagram, Vero, and my website. Also, if you use the glow filter regularly for something other than landscapes or uh, portraits, please let me know how you use it. And it might be something that I bring up in another video. Thank you for watching.